She has the kind of voice that could jumpstart a car. It's big, it's powerful, and with it, Vanessa Amorosi sold a whopping 1.3 million copies of her debut album. She was 18 and all over the radio and TV. In fact, you couldn't even think without the chorus of Absolutely Everything or Shine occupying your head first. And then it all went quiet. After several years out of the spotlight, Vanessa is back with a new grittier image and a more mature sound, and she joins us this morning. Good morning, <laughs> Vanessa. Hi. Good morning, Vanessa. You, you know... I was saying in the intro there, 1.3 million copies of your debut album, and you're young, yeah. 18. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, do you think that all of that success, massive success, first off the bat, was actually a hindrance to your career? Not at all. No, not at all. I'd already started very, very young. Like, I was writing the Power album when I was 13, 14, and I was already gigging at that stage. So by the time I had success, I already felt like I'd been doing it for years. So off the back of that... Um, heading into the new phase of my career, it was really... Uh, I just felt like I'd been doing it for years. I didn't mm. find it much of a hindrance at all. Well, when you then go to back up after the success of that first album, which was phenomenally successful, how do you, how do you approach it? In, in the same way, or, or do you feel more pressure because of the success? I think if you come at it being honest, you end up coming out OK, I would say. I mean, it's very hard because you never know what is a hit. It's, music is so difficult these days because you never know what's going to, you know, turn the public on and off. So I think if you're just writing music that you know about and writing topics that you have experienced and singing truthfully, then hopefully that stands the test of time yeah. rather than being something that you're not. Yeah. So do, yeah. when you, and everyone in the, in the music business knows the second album is the really hard album, particularly if, have, if you have big success with the first one, do you just go about it exactly the same way? Yeah, Do yeah, you have really. no? Did you feel fear going into the second album? No, the, the only thing that I was really conscious about is that because I was doing so much work on the downtime when people didn't see me, I was doing a lot of production and, and um, writing for other people. The only thing that worried me is that I'd become stale and quite boring. So when writing the second album, I put myself in a situation that I haven't been in where that's why I went to LA and chose people that didn't know about my success or what I had previously done so that I could start again and, and be quite nervous about what I was about to deliver. So I think you can get too comfortable and that's, that can become a problem. Well, there's, there's always your mum, though. Yeah. She'll tell you what's going on. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course she will. <laughs> I was reading some great well, stuff in the research about her... her bringing out the best in you, encouraging you to move her. Well, she's you just, just extremely rolled your eyes, honest. by the way. She's <laughs> extremely honest. And, and that's what you... When you have success, you get a lot of people that'll tell you what you want to hear. And you need to have a good bunch of people around you when success hits and money because, you know, you need someone to tell it like it is. No, you were crap. No, you don't look great. No, you aren't acting the right way. And that's the, the great thing about having my mum, who's been an entertainer her whole life, and so is all my family, that they're brutally honest. And that's what keeps you grounded and level-headed and keeps the work at a certain level. It's yeah, a very so. interesting, interesting point you bring up because... You would think in the industry that you would have people that would be able, professional people that would be able to say that to you. But in many respects, people in the industry are surrounded by people that don't tell them the truth. I mean, yeah, I think it's money. <coughs> money, I mean, it's all, it's all great to earn it, but it brings a lot of hindrance and, and a lot of problems to the industry. That's why I think with, with doing it the old school way of coming up in the music industry, working the bottom of the ladder up, you, you meet the right people and you learn quickly the right people to be surrounded by so that when success does happen, you've got people that know what you're about, mm. that know what it takes and also have a certain standard to expect from you because you can tend to become lazy and, it, and it, you know, it's, it's a crazy lifestyle. People love you for not knowing why sometimes. You, you were saying you, you can tend to become lazy. Can you, can you become scared? As in not yeah. making those brave choices? Yeah, I think I became, when I had success, I, I was a shy person anyway, but back when I was younger, I became even more shy. And I became really conscious and worried about, oh, why are they, you know, looking at me, not quite understanding that I was having success at that stage, and that's what happens to you. What kind mm. of control, we're, we're looking at a clip now. What kind <laughs> of. <laughs> Turn it off! <laughs> now, why is that okay, so funny? Okay, there's the reaction. What kind of control do you have over these things? I mean, and particularly, it's a very difficult area for, for a young woman in the business, isn't it? Because you, you see all these clips that come out of the, the States, and it's just, you know, nonsense a lot of it, isn't it? And, and yeah. 
what kind of control do you have? I mean, I would imagine the industry is trying to push you into the same kind of area. Oh, when you're younger, they definitely are telling you this is how it's done, this is how you have hits, and this is what people want. So, yeah, back when I started, it was very... There was a lot of miming and there wasn't much live music, yeah. and it was really just looking like a model and having half your clothes off. Yeah. So it was a big battle as a kid to keep my clothes on and, and to be singing live. But, I mean, the industry's changed now because of the pirating of music and stuff. They're wanting more entertainers and... You've got a little bit more pull. Well, I do now being older. I know that I won't pull off being half naked and, and yeah. I don't do what I used to do as a kid, try and satisfy, even though it wasn't me. And, and it's interesting because I'm, I, when you were watching that, I mean, you, you, were so, you <laughs> had that beautiful baby <laughs> face at that stage and, and you've really matured into a, a beautiful grown-up. I mean, is, is that hard for an audience to follow you as well? I think so. I know as myself as watching an artist or a band, I tend to love them from when they start and not be able to continue the journey and I still look at some of these acts that I've grown up with thinking that they're still 15 to 18 and they've all grown up mm. like me same, mm. same as my fans sometimes I see my fans because I've been away for the last five years and I forget that they've grown up as well mm. so it's an interesting it's sort of interesting yeah why do you you mentioned earlier you did this new the new album which is yet to come out it's coming yeah. out well, in, in May in the May. 24th um, why did you go to the States to do it you're a songwriter how difficult is it to go and meet a complete stranger <laughs> and get in a room and just start, suddenly write songs. And so, why do you have to go to the States to do that? So difficult. Well, there's great songwriters here. Yeah. And there are some songs that I've written with writers that are here. But the fact is that because I was doing it for like five years here, it, it, it was becoming it's something that I... Yeah, mm. I wasn't worried about walking into the studio with them. But it's extremely scary when you step overseas because you don't know what religion, culture they are, what their whole existence has been up into that point and they don't know nothing about you and I tend to get straight to the point lyrically and it's never really what it seems so it's definitely quite difficult. What do you do? How, do you, yeah, how, do you, how does the process work? So you've gone over there, someone's set it up, you're going to meet Mr Big Wig, songwriter in, in, in you know, yeah. California somewhere. You walk into the room and what do you do? G'day, I'm a Vanessa. What do you, yeah, how do you, how do you how start? It's so, it's so strange. I, the only, I've got a great story which I hope, hopefully answers that question. I was riding with a woman called Pam Reswick and she's this tiny little skinny nana looking woman. And, um, and a professional songwriter. Yeah, yeah, a big, big songwriter. And she ended up... What age? Uh, I would say, well, she looks really young, but I think she's around 65, wow. around yeah. there. And I, when I, my first impressions of her was, you know, just cups of tea and everything's going to be nice and pretty. Keep yourself and we get well to the behaved. studio, yeah, we're both holding guitars and we're going through. I had a couple of little riffs that I was playing to her. And she comes up, she goes, you know, I've got this idea. Now, this woman doesn't swear or anything, so I already feel like I'm a little bit rough on the edges. <laughs> she puts her foot up on oh, the amp. Oh, careful the swear word will last. <laughs> she puts her foot up on the amp, comes right over and starts going, random anonymous sex. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, I was thinking, you know, do I Not bring out a Christian book or something, you know, where I read stuff that's non, you know, scary for this. But yeah, she just went straight out and laid it like that. And then after that, I, she's just one of my favourite songwriters now. She has no limitations. I, I think, think that's, so, amazing. that's amazing. I only really fell off the chair. I, swear, yeah. I was so horrified. So, I was like, oh. and where, so where do you go from there? So she's got this. She's got random oh, anonymous yeah. sex. Oh, just bits of laughter. After I just went quiet for like ten seconds, she's like, oh. You don't like it? Like, she <laughs> must have went, oh, I must have scared her. She's into God or something like that. You know, this could be too bad. Uh, after we got through that little bit, it was great. We could get straight into writing and there were no limits. And, and I came out with some great songs. Like, we were going, we were writing about three or four songs a day. And, 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 and then how so do you... So you play and write at the same time? Yeah, play sometimes bit, we'll bit. get, like, the riff first or maybe yeah. the lyric or the melody and just putting it all together, really. So if someone comes at you with, <laughs> with the chorus, random anonymous sex, do you think, right, well, I've got to write a sex song now? Uh, well, actually, it was, it was quite the opposite. You know, she came out, she had this thing where she went, you know, I just want to talk about this. And so my take on that, it's, that's the great thing about co-writing with people, is you yeah. have a total different take on a lyric that they might have a whole thing to. And... My vibe on that whole random anonymous sex was how lost you would be if that's how you thought love was meant to be, with mm. different people every time. Mm. And she came up from an ad angle of how exciting it is and fresh <laughs> and interesting and that's what I want. So that's a great thing with writing with different people because you get two different takes which then people are left open 
to take it their own way. You know, you never want to be specific on exactly what you're talking about because yeah. that's a beauty of music. Look, obviously someone like her who's a professional writer is used to that collaboration, but, I mean, what if you... I what think if it's you... still scared her. I don't think really? anybody gets over it, yeah. And then even when I did other writing sessions with writers that have been writing with Pink and all of that... They still get quite nervous when meeting another person, whether, especially being a female and then being male, some of them, mm. whether they come out with things like that. Because mm. I'm wondering what happens if you get in there and you really just don't get each other. Well, that is Do you just kind of go, that. look, yeah, nice, yeah. let's just call it quits? Yeah, or... yeah. No, I, I've had a couple of writing sessions where it just wasn't working and it wasn't exciting and it was hard work. Yeah. So. Uh, look, the, as you said, the, the album comes out in, in May. The single is out now yeah. and the single is called uh, Perfect. And it's a terrific song. It's a really, this is a really great single. It's great to have you back and hopefully on the radio. And you're going to sing it for us later on? Yep. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thanks, Thanks so much. Good to see you. Thank you.